Shane, welcome back to Huchos. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on, Mitchell. Just recently, I set up a grow room and I was using uh, HPS globes in cool tubes uh, at the at the request of my mate who was adamant that it's a better system for growing. I'm like, okay, well, it's it's your room. We'll set it up however you like. We set it up with like all the stuff that he already had. And I got a heap of comments going like, I feel like I've gone back in time, you know, and it was it was actually, I, I really enjoyed reading the comments. And it seems that the public consensus had, had shifted from back uh, probably like five years ago when I, when I did a review, like a, a full breakdown of like why LEDs are great. There was a bunch of pushback in my comments going, no, nah, you just don't get the same growth as you do with HPS globes. It's like everything's flipped. Now the pushback from me even setting up a HPS globe was like, no, nah, LEDs are just better you know and there was a couple of diehard fans of hps you could tell in the comments just like going yeah i love this this is this is what i want yeah it was very interesting to see the the, the shift in public consensus on led to hps over those years what is your opinion on this matter well i'm an engineer so you know the answer is pretty simple they're just much more efficient We've seen them all in our daily lives, using them in lots of different contexts, you know, whether it's home lighting, uh, lighting on my bicycle when I cycle in the in the winter time, any of these sort of functions where we've been using LEDs and, and it's sort of, um, they become ubiquitous now, they're just everywhere. And, and there's, a, there's, there's no real argument um, for using HPS anymore. Um, the efficiency, of a modern LED light system is a is at least two times as efficient as the very best uh, HPS kit that money can buy. And at the same time, um, electricity prices have gone up pretty much globally. And um, the cost of the LED technology, along with the reliability and the availability and quality and all that stuff has gone way up. So, you know, it's just a much better technology. It's really that simple. What I would like to talk about is uh, the, I guess the overall cost considerations as well, because uh, the initial outlay for a HPS system is quite low. Um, and an LED is a, a good quality LED that's gonna last a long time, can be quite high. Um, well, less so now. But what is your opinion on that? Yeah, so, so let's look at the, um, the sort of commercial rates or the, the retail prices at the moment. Um, so I'm going to talk in US dollars uh, just because it's, um, it's easiest for, uh, as a medium for us. Um, but if you, if you think about, say, for example, a 600 watt HPS, which would be kind of a standard bearer, you can buy a bulb um a digital ballast and a reflector kit for probably as little as a, as 150 dollars for something which is is reasonably good quality and will probably have a lifespan um of a couple of years for the bulb um many more for the ballast and the reflector so let's say over let's take a five-year window um you're probably going to replace the bulb once or twice you might spend 250 dollars on that 600 watt piece of equipment now to buy an led equivalent for that it'll be about a us dollar per watt so for a 600 watt system it should cost you about 600 dollars now that's only a part of the story you're going to be running this thing probably <clears throat> an average of maybe 14 hours a day so maybe if you average out your, your veg cycle and your flowering cycle, somewhere between 16 and 12 hours, so about 14 hours a day. And you're gonna be running that for, uh, for this five year period. So quick maths is about 650 watts by 14 hours is, what are we at, about nine, um, is that, that right? Yeah, about nine kilowatts per day. What's the rate there, Mitchell, in Australia for, uh, for electricity <laughs> per? Per kilowatt hour, do you know? No. Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's point uh, two seven, so twenty seven cents. It's crazy. So tw twenty. Cents. So you're 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 looking at 
um, somewhere around uh, $3 per day um, for your electrical system. Now, that would be fine if that was one for one, but what really what, what we can get away with, um, if you're, you take your $3 per day over a year, that's $1,000 a year. And with a LED system, which remember is twice as efficient, we can half that. So we can save $500 a year over five years, which is two and a half thousand dollars. So we need about a three, 300, 350 watt LED to beat the HPS. So say $350 um, versus $150 uh, HPS. So we're saving about $200 upfront and we're spending an extra two and a half thousand dollars over a five year period. Uh, it's it saves in usually in, in less than a year. Um, usually at the, these days with the higher electricity costs, it, it's about eight months um, before you're 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 making money on the fact that you bought the more efficient um, uh, piece of equipment. Uh, so it's it's again from an engineering logical perspective, it's an apps like what we I call a no brainer. You know, you 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 don't need to think very long about it. It's very straightforward. I also kind of want to touch on um, while we're talking about like the usability of it. Um, something that not many people talk about is like the extra features you get with LEDs as well. So like for instance. HPS globes, they're very, they're very hard to work with because you got to, you can't handle them with your hands, right? Um, if you leave any oil on them, it, it degrades the bulbs and stuff. Um, it's a single point of light, you know. There's no spread of light. Um, it, it, you don't, you don't have the ability to shut parts of the light down or dim the light. Well, there are dimmable ballasts, but they're not really as, they're not as user friendly as like an LED, right? Can you extrapolate on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, they're, 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 they're frankly ridiculous to go back to when, when you've been using LEDs, it, it feels like you're stepping back in time. Um, and, uh, you know, all those things you talk about are true. So, uh, HPS bulb is a, 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 a tube with gas in it and, uh, an electrode inside. And, and in order to fire up, even it needs to go up to thousands of volts to create an arc uh to to ignite um the gas inside and um, to create the light and that bulb will will not only does it use a very high voltage to start up um but it also gets to a very high temperature so the bulb will get to 500 degrees centigrade um which having that in your house uh <laughs> never mind in a grow room with lots of things moving around and and all of that is just you, you know, I, I've had the experience in, in, in my house many years ago growing in the attic and having one of those, um, the bases of those bulbs and the wires inside melt. Um, and, you know, coming up to the grow room and realizing that, you know, it was a very close situation that I could have burnt the house down uh, was a major incentive for me nearly 10 years ago now to, to start switching to LEDs. Um, so, yes, a lot of heat. Uh, more dangerous in terms of high voltage electricity. Um, you've got, uh, as you say, the the way the light is distributed um, is um, is is not efficient in the sense that ideally you want all your plants in the grow area to get the same amount of light. You don't want to have to um, say move your plants around or orientate them in, in a particular way so that they don't get burnt or get singed or get too much light intensity um, and get bleached. Um, however, HPS is, 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 as you say, it's a single point of light. It's radiating, a, a, radiating it from one source and therefore radiates out in a sort of arc where uh, close and directly underneath that bulb, it's going to be very high intensity. And when you, as you move away from that center point, it's going to fall away very quickly. Modern LED designs are designed usually in a sort of a grid-like way. So it'll either be LED bars or um, panels, which are spread out to usually to almost the extent of the grow area that it's supposed to cover. So um, it, 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 it naturally 
uh, spreads out that light very wide um, and um, you get even light distribution. Another benefit is you can bring the light down closer to the plants um, and that means you get less overspill. So if you have a plane of the plants are here and the light is here, a lot of that light is going to shoot over the edges, which if yeah. you have reflective walls, right. you can direct it back in, but you still get losses there. So the LEDs themselves are more efficient. They deliver the light more evenly. And um, the last thing in, in terms of that heat, uh, unless you're in a very cold climate, um, or completely uninsulated shed in a cold climate, uh, that heat is unwanted. You have to treat it. Um, you have to blow the air through um, and extract that air in order to uh, maintain a, the, the, the correct temperature in the grow room. And that again is, is costing more electricity. It's causing noise. It's more ducting, all of that stuff. So uh, using LED lighting, it's, it's just easier. Um, and, and your other question about our thing about the controls. So, you know, you can't plug a HPS straight into a normal plug socket. It, it needs a special uh, kind of a buffer timer circuit um, because normal timers will get burnt out because there's a big load comes onto that HPS when it starts up. Um, whereas LEDs are what's known as soft start. So they don't take a big load off the um, electrical system when they start up. Um, so it, it's much safer for your electrical system. It takes less of a load off it. And um, as you say, you've got other nice little functions as well. Like you can hook the LEDs up often a lot more easier to have um, external controllers. They can dim them with a, um, an analog signal, zero to 10 volt signal. You can control multiple uh, uh, fixtures simultaneously. Um, uh, uh, you know, as with the efficiency from a usability point of view, no brainer again. Yeah, I have to agree. I want to touch on, uh, spectrum essentially. Uh, what I did notice while I was setting up these HPS globes in this grow room video was when the cool tubes were pulling the air through, they were ducting out the ambient heat. Now, there was a bunch, I could feel it on my skin. I could feel the infrared radiation. And there's no amount of fan that's going to get rid of that because it's traveling as heat waves and then hitting a surface. And it's giving off so much infrared, you know. Whereas LEDs, I've never, I've had, you know, you can feel the heat enough from a decent enough size LED. But it's nowhere near what you, you you're almost burning your skin with with the HPS, and that spectrum is tailorable with LED too, isn't it? Yeah. So first of all, you know, in the early days of LED, people moving to LEDs, there was the belief that the spectrum was inferior from LEDs, um, which is just not true. You you, you can use a, a spectra radiometer, it's called. They're quite expensive. You know, they're a couple of thousand dollars. But I have a few of them here, and I've tested all available sources of HID, so metal halide, ceramic metal halide, HPS bulbs, and uh, LED spectrum. Now plants, um, as you say, they, they, do not, uh, they do not use infrared. So infrared is heat, it's nothing but waste, um, and will basically stress the canopy of your plants because it'll, it'll heat up those upper leaves and um, will cause them to respire more and cause them to uh, basically dry out and cause them stress. They'll have to be uh, pumping water up to those leaves to keep them cool at the expense of doing other, using energy for other things like growing and uh, putting on mass. So the infrared does nothing for the plant. It's of no benefit. If you look at the, this, the broader spectrum, if you will, you've got the visual range. So it's called the PAR, it's very similar to the PAR range. That's photosynthesis photosynthetically active radiation. And this is the, um, the uh, wavelengths or colors of light that will cause plants to grow. And it's the same as the visual range. So if we can see light visually, uh, plants can use that same light to grow. And that's, the, you know, the, you think of the spectrum of the rainbow. So it's basically the blue, green, and red are the, are the main colors in that light. Um, and a little bit before that blue, it's called ultraviolet. 
Um, ultraviolet can have an effect on plants. Uh, um, it can change the, the way plants grow and in sometimes the way they express themselves in terms of color and uh, resins and all that stuff. However, HPS does not have UVB and has only a tiny amount of UVA. Um, and when you get to the other end, so you get beyond red, which is at the end of the visual spectrum and end of the PAR range, you go into first what's called far red. So that's from 700 to 750 nanometers. Now that does cause some growth. Um, HPS does have quite a lot of it, but it also causes what's called stretching. Um, and there's two reasons that a, um, a light spectrum or the spectrum coming from a grow light uh, may be problematic. And the first is if it has too much far red. And the other one is if it has too little blue. And the reason is that um, both blue and far red, uh, if you have a lot of blue and, and disproportionately less far red, um, you can have plants will will uh, stretch. It um, causes their cells to elongate. That means the building blocks of the plant elongate, and everything becomes longer. So the distance to the branches, the leaves, uh, um, all become longer, and you get tall, gangly plants. Undesirable in an indoor setting. You don't want tall plants. You want them to remain short and compact because we're in a, in a limited. Uh, space limited height in particular um, so the benefits that HPS have in terms of its spectrum of having very small amount of blue um, and having a lot of far red are not wanted in the grow room um, indoor growers do not want them and as you say with LEDs you can decide to have them in or out you can you can use different LEDs to provide these different wavelengths and the simplest most efficient and available light source in LED terms is just a simple white LED, same ones we have at home. And we use them in the grow lights and they give us a nice uh, sort of neutral white, very clear white, so you can see the health of your plants. Everything looks nice as well. And you don't, you have a nice balance of blue in the spectrum <clears throat> and you don't have far red. And that's a great thing, works perfectly for us. Um, unfortunately, the human uh, human nature is that we're never happy with just getting a simple, straight answer uh, that the simplest thing right in front of us is working the best. So people do go off and have websites and blog pages and videos and all sorts of things trying to uh, prove that, um, you know, whether it's UVA or far red or any of the things. Well, they try to sell them to you, basically, you know, yeah. um, but they're not needed. They're not needed. You just get a simple white light. Um, one thing I would add to it is, is, is you can give a boost to the efficiency of that white LED light by adding, you might have seen them, the little red diodes. And yep. um, the reason they're in there is because red is very photosynthetically efficient and they're electrically efficient. So you get lots of photons per watt from those little red LEDs. So if you add them to the white, it's like a turbo booster for the efficiency of your white LED grow light. Um, so if you see white ones with those sort of deep red LEDs in it, it's not far red, it's not for flowering, it's just a, uh, a booster. It'll, it, it's boosting the efficiency of the overall system. My understanding of that is that the, uh, the white phosphor over the top of the, L the white LEDs is, is not as energy efficient when it's converting the, is it blue LED light underneath the white phosphor? Yeah, so uh, a white LED is not actually a white LED, <laughs> confusingly. Um, so you'll see a little yellow sort of a surface on top of the LED, but that's phosphorus. And, and what's, what's underneath is a blue LED. And um, in the simplest way, can I explain it? The, the blue LEDs are very efficient. So they, they pump out a lot of blue photons. Um, but, you know, blue light is not useful for us. We want a nice white light, which is a mixture of, of blue, green, and red. That gives us white, if you remember our yep. school days. Um, and when the blue photons are shone through this phosphorus, uh, they diffract. 
So they change in color. And so if you have a very uh, thick coating, you'll see it as a darker yellow phosphorus coating on the top. Um, it'll convert more of those photons from blue into green and, and red. So it'll get a more orange sort of warm uh, white light. If you put a, a light coating of phosphorus on top of it, it'll be quite a, a cool white color um, LED compared to the, as I said, the uh, the warmer white. So it's it's a way of providing um, the three elements to create white light from a blue LED. That's maybe a little bit out of the scope of the video, but still very interesting. One other thing we should talk about is uh, grow room temperature. Obviously, we've talked about the heat that the HPS and metal halides give off compared to the relatively low amount of heat that LEDs give off. Yeah, so um, there's sort of a, a terminology around this that has is, is come about the last few years called crop steering. And um, it's a phrase used to explain uh, controlling your environment in order to get the best outcome in terms of the characteristics you want from your crop. So when we're, we're talking about uh, medicinal herbs, we want bulk, of course, we want mass from the plant. So as, as much flower mass as possible, but we want that flower mass to be as basically as potent as possible. So to retain you know, the cannabinoids uh, to retain the resins and oils uh, so that it, it, it's it got a good flavor and uh, smell. And um, the best way to do that is to maintain a relatively low temperature in the, in the grow room. So, you know, we're talking keep at the, at, particularly at the latter part of flowering to keep the temperatures down to in and around 20 to 22 degrees centigrade. And, you know, the buds form at the top of the plant. So they're exposed at the top of the canopy. And um, in a HPS situation, they're getting bombarded with infrared. So even if you have your cool tubes um, and all that stuff, keeping the air cool, the bud temperatures are actually going to be higher than the room temperature. So um, you have this sort of uh, strange situation where you're, you're going to have to keep your your room temperature even lower again to maintain um, that bud temperature 2022. And that's going to reduce your growth rate because a lower temperature equals lower growth rate. Whereas with LEDs, the temperature of those buds will be more aligned with the room temperature because they're not getting that um, blast from the, the, uh, the infrared at the top. And so you can maintain um, a higher room temperature uh, was keeping the bud temperature lower. So it enables you to get a better crop quality at the end. Um, you can still do it HPS, but you're going to be, you're going to be fighting it. Um, you're going to be fighting the fact that those buds are, are getting blasted by infrared and um, that your room temperature, it's harder to keep that temperature down, um, particularly when the environment outside is warmer. That's interesting because it's kind of counterintuitive. It, the the coolness of the LEDs allows you to have a hotter room, but a more consistently hotter room. So it's it, correct. Yeah, that's that's I, I never thought about it that way. It, you you're just trying to because if you have a hotter room, obviously the 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 buds at the top in the HPS or or a metal metal halide room, they're just going to be burning essentially. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Anything else you think we should touch on? Those the people that this conversation is probably directed to, it's people that have probably been using high pressure sodium and metal halide bulbs for a long time. Yeah. And what happens is, and I've done it myself, you just get used to operating a certain way and you know, you've learned uh you've 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 gone through mistakes. Um, you've learned by error and yeah. it's very hard to give up that experience, um, to change the way you operate. So to how to maintain your, 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 um, your environment, for example, setting up your lights, um, all of that stuff, it's, it's a change and, uh, you know, we don't like change and, uh, no. it could be quite difficult to do it. But what I would say being, you know, having, gone through this whole sort of shift from HPS to LED from pretty much the start. So I've been operating now for eight years, nine years. 
uh, having grown with HPS for about 10 years previously, um, first thing is that in the early days, LEDs were terrible. So I just ter I just tested I tested my own. I, I bought them directly from China because they were so expensive and I was trying to keep costs down. I switched over and the early D LEDs did not do the same as the HPS. And uh, because they were selling stuff which wasn't um, as as described, you know. So they were they were saying, you know, this this LED you can you can you only need half the wattage or whatever. Whereas in fact the LEDs were less efficient than than HPS in the early days. So it, it was um, it burnt a lot of people. She's the pun, you know. It but it, <laughs> it 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 put a lot of people off, and it 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 knocked their confidence in terms of using the technology. What I'd say now is is yes, that was true, but it's no longer true, and and hasn't been true for probably five or six years now. Um, and you know, just just look around, talk to people who have done it um properly you know um, yeah. not just giving it a bad go 10 years ago but people have done it properly recently um and i think you'd be encouraged by the fact that it just as we've described the whole way it becomes cheaper it's easier um and you get a better quality product um and you can actually another benefit which we didn't touch on is because you've i, I give you i give you this in numbers first but so in, in the 600 watt HPS in a four by four tent, you would have got an average of about 560 par uh, average across the plant canopy. Now that directly translates into, um, into growth. So say you get 560 units of growth. What growers are doing, and, and that would, by the way, was limited by heat because you couldn't really put anything more than a 600 watt HPS into a four by four tent because it was just, it was too much. I tried it with a thousand watt years ago and it was like having the sun in your, in your grow tent. It was just insane. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd be immediately sweating the minute you, you put a hand in there and never mind. Um, but growers with led now are really pushing things. So they're pushing the light intensity in a four by four up to 1300 micromoles now. So it's, it's two and a half times as as high light intensity and that if everything else is dialed in so you know your your medium your your strains your genetics your feed all that stuff is dialed in that can convert directly into growth so you can actually produce two and a half times as much in the same space as you could 10 years ago which mm. you know if you're to it's extraordinary really um now it, the analogy with that it's a bit like driving a ferrari you know you, you need to be you're on the edge and you need to be uh, as i said operating everything um uh really well so you don't have any bottlenecks and you're not stressing the plants in other ways but it's totally achievable for for example outdoor sun is 2000 micromoles so you know we're going to about two-thirds of what midday sun would be um plants love it uh, they can really take it. Um, medicinal herbs are known now to be a real outlier in terms of being able to utilize that high light intensity over the the the, the light period or the day. Uh, other plants just wouldn't take up all that light. They they they'd get saturated. Um, but they're they're they they've found now to be um, particularly capable of of absorbing that. So. You know, it, it, that's another frontier now where, um, you know, where we would have been putting 400 watt um, LED grow lights into a four by four. People are now putting seven, eight, seven, 800 watt grow lights in and, uh, you know, they're kicking ass, you know, they're, 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 do, they're doing extraordinary things in that size of a space. So say someone has watched this video and they were, they were a HPS uh, loyalist. And they're now questioning that loyalty and going, okay, but where do I start? What behaviors do I need to change? Uh, what things do I need to implement in the grow rooms that I have? And what's your advice to them going forward? So you can same strains. You don't need to change strains. If you have a strain that you're comfortable with or that you like to mm. smoke or whatever, you just you can keep that. That's no problem. Same with growing medium. You know, if you if you're comfortable in soil, comfortable with hydroponics, whatever it is, you don't need to change that up at all. Um, things that you do need to change is 
Uh, you need to reconsider, for example, um, watering and uh, reconsider a, a little bit about your environmental control. You're not going to have to suck the air through so fast. Uh, you, you probably can throttle it down or downgrade or put in a, a fan speed controller or something to, 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 to manage the airflow. Um, in terms of what you need lighting wise, uh, it's half. Uh, so with a, a pretty much all modern LED lighting systems are going to be twice as efficient as the best set of HPS. So you need about half the wattage to maintain the same um, rate of, or sorry, quantity of growth, uh, mass um, in terms of yield. Uh, but uh, I would recommend to, to push that a little bit. I wouldn't say match it with um, with uh, uh, per watt per watt with LED, but you can go close to it. So if you're using a 600 watt HPS, you might get a 500 watt LED, for example. That's gonna give you about a 40% increase in growth rate whilst reducing your electricity consumption significantly. And remembering too, that they can dim it down as well. So if you get a dimmable light, you can always dim it down and then work your way up to something that you're comfortable with. I was just going to say that. So a lot, a lot of people talk about what are my dimmer settings and how do I use the lights? And, and it's another um, realization um, with lots of testing and, and um, studies which have been released that uh, medicinal herb plants can, can take high intensity from, from very young too. And I'm talking from three, four weeks old. So not only can you get more mass at the end, but you can really speed up that veg cycle in the early stages. Uh, so higher, higher light intensity from a very early stage. Um, so often I'd be recommending 30 or 4%, 30 or 40% dimmer settings uh, for very young plants up to two or three weeks old, but then jacket it up as quickly as possible uh, to drive that growth as quickly as possible. Um, so not only are you getting more yield per square foot or per square meter, um, but you're getting it faster too, because if you're on, if you're with photo period plants, uh, you can veg them quicker with higher light intensity. Um, and particularly with those younger plants, they can be a little bit more susceptible to sort of drying out um, because they're a little bit more delicate. Um, but with LEDs, you know, you have that advantage where you're not blasting with this um, radiant heat. So you can push that um, light intensity a lot higher, a lot quicker with less stress on the plants. And would you be happy to say that pull that light as close to the canopy as possible, like within like 12 inches? Yeah, so rough guide with um, HPS would be probably 18 to 24 inches um, would be minimum. Uh, whereas with LEDs, you, it would be probably 12 inches. So you can get a lot closer. There's not an, an actual real benefit in that. You know, you, it's just it's just a better practice. Um, but as I said, the difference between, for example, having an LED light at, at about 12 inches above and 24 inches above um, is you get about somewhere between five and 10% more light is going to reach the plant canopy. Um, the spread will be pretty much the same. Um, so you're, you're just really making the system as efficient as, as possible. So thank you, Shane, uh, for joining us today on Huchos. Thank you for sharing all of your um, expertise. And it's a pleasure to have you on again. Yeah, it's been great to talk. And, um, you know, I think you're going to refer to it, but... I have lots of blog posts and lots of video content on the, on this particular topic it goes into all the depth, technical depth you'd ever want to go into, um, available on the website, migrolight.com, um, or on the YouTube channel, Migro. Been, uh, banging on about this same topic for many years now. So I've, uh, I think I've refined the arguments reasonably well. Um, and, uh, I try to keep them as concise and factual as possible as well. So, um, Hope you can find some useful information there. Absolutely. And there is going to be linked at the end of this video, a link to Shane's channel, as well as his video on this subject. Uh, and in the description, there will be his blog posts and a link to his website as well. So thank you for joining me today on Huchos. Thank you, Shane, for joining us. Real pleasure. Take care.
and I will see you next time on Who Chose. All right, mate. I'll um, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Have a good one.